Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show, and it's time for episode two of stories from Leeds United centenary year. Um, I had a lot of great reaction from the episode one that we did on Albert Johansson, so thank you for everyone that took the time to watch it and interact with it. Uh, and there were some lush comments on there and some... Um, you know, memories shared, which was really great to see. So um, thank you for those that have watched it and have, um, you know, got involved. Um, this one might be a little bit different because it might um, bring up a little bit of anger. I know it does for me because Leeds United should be champions of Europe. It should say that in the annals of history that Leeds United are champions of Europe. We all know why we sing that wacko chant. But for those that don't, we're going to delve into it a little bit. This one's called the Ghost Trophies. Now, on the dream scene, there's a lovely little image of uh, Dom Revy and Howard Wilkinson just sharing a cup of tea and sharing some jokes. And behind them, you can see two sort of like ghost-like images of European Cups that Leeds United, of course, should have won, but unfortunately were cheated out of them. So on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at that. <laughs> Now, Leeds United do boast an impressive um, array of trophies. First Division champions on three occasions. Yes, the First Division existed before the Premier League. League Cup winner once, FA Cup winner once. We won the Community Shield on two occasions, which at that point was known as the English Super Cup. And also the Intercities Fairs Cup on two occasions, which has had several different monikers over the years. Basically, it was a European competition that was taking place between 1955 and 1971. And it's often considered as the precursor to the Europa League. And just finally, the second division, now known as the Championship, on four separate occasions. But Leeds should have two more trophies added to that cabinet. Two European trophies, to be exact. One of them being what is now known as the Champions League. And we're going to be talking about both of these finals. The 1973 European Cup Winners' Cup Final and the 1975 European Cup Final. The 1973 European Cup Winners' Cup Final between Milan and Leeds United. The match took place in Greece and Milan secured a 1-0 victory with the decisive goal scored by Luciano Chiarugi. However, controversy surrounded this fixture and more importantly, the referee, Christos Mikas, who was later banned for life by UEFA due to match fixing. Leeds fans at the time believed Mikas had favoured Milan, leading to protests and appeals for a replay, which were ultimately denied. Mikas's decisions during the match were perceived as biased towards Milan by the Greek crowd and, of course, by Leeds United fans. And in response, the crowd threw missiles during the victor's lap of honour. And despite many protests over the years, the result was never overturned. Although Mikasa's role in this specific match was not thoroughly investigated, he did get banned for life from UEFA. And of course, the controversy then surrounding his actions and the subsequent ban left fans bemused. And of course, when you consider just how much he favoured Milan during that fixture, it could only mean one thing. And due to this, and due to these several unfair decisions made during the game. Leeds United attempted to request a replay, but UEFA did deny that appeal. Decades later, Richard Corbett, then MP of Yorkshire and the Humber, petitioned UEFA for a rev revocation of Milan's title. However, the controversial result remains unchanged in the history books. In summary, the 73 European Cup Winners' Cup final left a lasting mark due to the referee's actions perceived bias and the subsequent ban, making it one of the most talked about football matches of its time. Now, as I said, Mikos did receive a lifetime ban. Uh, Greek footballing referee, he'd officiated several significant Greek cup finals, four to be precise, between 1968 and 1972. And then, of course, he was given the 1973 European Cup Winners' Cup final. This was considered the pinnacle of his career. He became the first Greek referee to officiate a European Cup final. But of course, his performance during that final was widely criticised. And ultimately, it culminated in him being banned by UEFA. It's clear that cash was exchanged because he goes from 
domestically refereeing cup finals in Greece, four years on the spin, gets the European Cup final, boom, shoddy performance, Milan win 1-0, Leeds United are without a European trophy. I mean, it was as recent as 2011-12 that the Italian football was embroiled in a match-fixing scandal. It just pains me that not enough was done, um, especially when you consider, even if, look, you revoke their title, right? Even if you don't want to give it to Leeds United because ultimately the score ended 1-0 or whatever, but just revoke that title. Arguably, though, the 1975 final is the more known final amongst Leeds United fans and, of course, was the origin of the Wacko chant. We are the champions, champions of Europe. And in that season and in that final, in what is now considered the Champions League, Leeds United faced Bayern Munich in the cup final at the Parc de Prince in Paris. Bayern Munich, who were defending champions, were, of course, favourites, but Leeds had a fantastic Star. The referee was Michel Kitabajan, which please forgive me, I'll, I'll have butchered his name. You know pronunciation isn't my strong point, but French referee Michel will go with. And Leeds United ultimately had two penalty appeals turned down by the referee and a further disallowed goal by Peter Lorimer. And Bayern Munich ultimately secured a 2-0 victory with goals from Franz Roth and Gert Muller. It just added insult to injury when you considered what had happened just years before, and um, Leeds United fans' frustration spilled over into riots during the match, leading UEFA to ban the club from European competition for four years, which was later reduced to two years on appeal. Uh, despite the loss, Leeds' journey to the final remains etched in football folklore, not least due to the controversy. Leeds came close to European glory in both instances, but fate and contentious circumstances denied us of that ultimate triumph like I say it pains me when I see Champions League winners and you see Villa on there you see Forrest on there and of course the recent winners in the top six etc but Leeds United should be there Leeds were appearing in their first Champions League final we'll call it that yeah um, we'd progress through four rounds to reach that stage, and a crowd of just over 48,000 witnessed the clash in France. Leeds dominated the match and had several near misses, two appeals for a penalty turned down, and of course, a disallowed goal for an offside that never was against Peter Lorimer. But Franz Roth scored in the 71st minute, and Gert Muller extended the lead 10 minutes from time, securing a 2-0 victory for Bayern Munich. And Leeds fans, rightly so, felt that their club were cheated, leading to that famous chant, we are the champions, champions of Europe. Ultimately, though, Bayern Munich celebrated their second consecutive European Cup victory. But that final, much like the Milan one, will be forever etched in football history as a dramatic and contentious showdown. And, and obviously will stick in a lot of Leeds fans' minds, you know, I wasn't alive, but it still pains me, as I say, when I see past winners of Champions League, knowing that Leeds United should be at that table and be able to say, yeah, but we've won a Champions League, mate, you know? Um, and that was taken away from us. I imagine it happening now. Like, imagine that emotion that it would, it would evoke. As I say, I've seen a lot of comments on the Albert Johansson video. I can't wait to read some of those that were actually alive and kicking when this has happened. Some of them might have even been at the game. And look, the referee who officiated that European Cup final was never formally investigated, unlike um, the Greek referee. And his performances, while rated poorly by FIFA officials observing the game, no conclusive evidence of corruption was ever established. And of course, the events of that night in, in Paris still, you know, sparked debate among football fans. But the referee Michel's involvement in match fixing remains unproven. I'll let you be the judge. But ultimately, them ghost tro trophies shouldn't be that. They should be brought back to life. We need to get a vet field in and Derek Okora on the case to bring them back to life and uh, get them in our in our trophy cabinet. It's just disappointing as well because obviously you think, will Leeds United ever get to a level where they can win such a prestigious competition again? You hope so, but probably not in my lifetime. Like <laughs> It would take a lot, especially when you consider where football's gone. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's painful and disappointing to know that on both occasions we were cheated. But listen, folks, let me know your thoughts on episode two, the Ghost Trophies. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I hope you're enjoying the series. As I say, I've got a lot more in the bank. More will be on route. But please do smash a like. As I say, the international break is tough for content creators. So any sort of interaction, likes, comments, shares, it all massively helps. So please do do that and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace out. Leads, leads, leads.